Welcome to another episode with the Fiat 500 Abarth on every other Friday off. Today we'll be installing a brand new shiny red 28mm rear sway bar. And we'll do some crude science to try to explain why you might want to put such a sway bar on your front wheel drive hashback. The car needs to be raised so that both rear wheels can be removed. It needs to be well supported because we'll really be tugging on some bolts. And some of these bolts can be pretty sticky with corrosion. So grab the PB blaster, let it soak in, and have a cup of coffee while you wait. The sway bar is held in the sway bar bracket on each end by two 21mm pinch bolts. That's 13 sixteenths in Freedom units. It's not cheating, it's working smarter, not harder. This thing's going to be tight as heck and I need all the help I can get. We'll be doing this to the pinch bolt on both sides of the sway bar. They need to be loosened completely, but you don't want to pull the bolt all the way out. Now we're going to go after the two bolts that hold the sway bar bracket on. We only have to do this on one side. The bolts are E18 external torques, and because of the brake caliper, you can't use a socket. But since I doubt even the Fiat guys have an external box end wrench for E18, a 14mm, especially 12 point box end wrench will work fine in its place. When you finally get the blue loctited bolt almost all the way out, be careful not to trap your wrench between the bolt and the brake caliper. With the bolts removed, drop the bracket and pull it off the sway bar. Then just persuade the sway bar out of the opposite bracket. Old sway bar, meet your hotter, younger replacement. So we pulled one stick of metal out of the car and put a bigger stick in, but why? Even though the Fiat Abarth out of the factory handles very well and is remarkably neutral for such a short wheelbase front wheel drive vehicle, it still is fundamentally a front wheel drive hatchback. That means it's prone to understeer. Drifting's controlled oversteer. The back end slides out in the corner. But in a front wheel drive hatchback, understeer's the problem where you turn and the car just keeps pushing. Stiffening up the rear sway bar of a front wheel drive car will bias the car towards oversteer. But how does it work? The torsion bar was hooked to the hub assembly via a bracket that we fought with earlier. We can think of that bracket like a lever. When one side suspension is compressed, it rotates the bar, which rotates the opposite side of the bar. During a hard right turn, the left hand side of the suspension is compressed. The right hand side is unloaded, but the torsion bar lifts the right hand side, compressing it. This reduces body roll, which helps out the geometry on your front suspension but it also takes weight off of that inside rear wheel. With less weight, there's less contact patch and the tires can step out, allowing the rear end to slide. The stiffer the bar, the greater the effect. Getting the rear end loose to create a little bit of oversteer should let me get around a corner a little bit quicker. But those are the internet reasons for adding a stiffer rear sway bar. On every other Friday off, we always want numbers whenever possible. And thanks to some borrowed corner scales, I'm going to try to get some. It's time for science. First, what if we had no sway bar at all? What would our weight distribution going around a corner look like then? Remember on a right hand turn, the right hand side of the car is going to unload while the left hand side compresses. I'm going to create that here in the shop using my floor jack. Lifting from the rear jack point moves some of the weight to the left and some of the weight forward, similar to how the car behaves during a hard turn. As I lift the car, I can see the load on the scales increased on the left-hand side and also come off of the right-hand side. A stiffer sway bar is going to reduce the load seen by that right rear tire. In this test, the sway bar is completely missing. So, the load I get on the right rear tire for a given left-hand side load should be the heaviest, i.e. this would be the most understeer configuration. So creating a given tire load on the left-hand side, I used 500 pounds of force trying to flip the car, and that reduced the weight seen by the right rear wheel to 160 pounds. I did the same test before I removed the sway bar. I jacked up the car to create the same load as I had before on the left hand side. Because the sway bar adds roll resistance, I had to add about 100 extra pounds of lift to create the same force on the left hand tires. And at the end of that lift, there's about 50 pounds less weight on that right rear wheel compared to without a sway bar. 
So let's go ahead and stick our shiny new sway bar into the bracket that we left hanging previously. A rubber mallet can be used to persuade the sway bar into place. And we can go ahead and hang the bracket back onto the sway bar, making sure that the bolt head is facing down. And we'll get the two blue Loctite bolts that hold the bracket in place started. It's back to the 14 millimeter to run the bolts in. And I have no means of putting a torque wrench on these things, so I went with the torque spec of tight as hell. Even up the two ends of the sway bar. Then it's back to work with our 13 sixteenths or 21 millimeter socket. And remember to tighten up both sides. The pinch bolts do have a torque spec of 140 foot-pounds. So get your most badass grunt ready. Wheels go back on. An impact wrench is not a torque wrench, you jiffy lube bastards. Mine takes 75 foot-pounds. And moment of truth. We spent some money. We took a day off to put on parts. Let's see if any of this was worthwhile. For the same load on the left hand tires, I had to lift with 200 extra pounds, and my load on the right rear tire is only 61 pounds. That's 100 pounds less than with no sway bar, and 50 pounds less than with the stock sway bar. The flatter geometry and the lighter rear end should let me rotate the car a lot more effectively in tight, hard turns. Thanks for watching. I hope it was entertaining. Please consider liking and subscribing. We've got a whole lot more Fiat Abarth mod videos to come and a whole lot more silly testing as well. Thanks.